welcome back friends it is lovely to be with you again for yet another kids connection today we are continuing with our parables of jesus uh, series which is filled with stories with jesus telling some kind of unexpected uh, stories and messages for us so i thought i'd start with an unexpected trick before we start our song so i have before us a glass and a coin hmm i am going to make this coin here disappear are you ready magicy magicy moo and it's gone shall i get it back again let's keep those pennies with us ready magicy magicy moo wowzers chrissy why don't you zoom in and i'll show it close up ready getting my magic vibes ready and gonna make the coin disappear Ooh. okay let's make money appear again magicy 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 wowzers that's cool that is a good trick if only i could make money appear more often uh enjoy today's song everybody Let's have a 
quick recap over the parables that we've taken a look at so far. We started off with the unforgiving servant and learnt how we should forgive others because Jesus first forgave us. Then we took a look at the lost sheep and we learnt how much Jesus loves us. And this week, oh no, last week we looked at the two sons and how we need to follow Jesus with our actions. And this week we have a new story about a wealthy man. So today's memory verse is 1 Timothy 6 verse 17. And it says, do not put your hope in wealth, but in God. Let's check out today's story, but um, I'm thinking I should have a snack. Pepper? Ketchup? Or the crisps? Stories of the Bible The Parable of the Wealthy Man This is Jesus hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. Uh, wahoo! One day, a crowd gathered around Jesus to hear him talk. The crowd was so big that people were stepping on each other. Hey, watch it! Jesus was talking to his disciples when someone called out from the crowd. Hey, Jesus! Teacher, tell my brother to divide with me the property our father left us. Ah, uh, hold on there. Jesus said, Friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Be careful and guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life is not measured by the many things he owns. Huh? Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Hmm. Ah, I got it. Then he said, I know, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. <laughs> now take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. <laughs> but God said to him, you fool, you will die this very night. <laughs> Wait, what? Then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. I went with the crisps. Are you surprised? So in today's story, we have the story of the wealthy man, a parable that Jesus taught to help us better understand about uh, money and, and greed and things. And I don't think that the wealthy man did anything wrong in building his barn. I don't even think that uh, God dislikes money or discourages it. What he got wrong was that he put his hope in his money and not his hope in God, like it says in our memory verse. In fact, I'm going to read you a bit more around our memory verse. It's from 1 Timothy 6 verses 17 to 18 and it says, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides for us everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. So what should the wealthy man have done? What is Jesus teaching us here? He's teaching us that with our wealth, we should do good, we should be generous and we should share. Now, that could be tricky. If you're saving up for the next cool computer game or awesome doll, it can be hard to do that. In fact, let me just uh, rearrange things a little. 
So when I was little, I used to get pocket money. Now, obviously this is a long time ago um, in the olden days. So uh, I didn't get loads of pocket money. So I would take say 10%, a, a chunk of my pocket money and I would set it aside in a glass jar, a bit like this one. So it, it wasn't loads of money. So I would put in my two peas each week and they would add up and add up. Let's tip them all in. And I would do this every time I got given pocket money or every time I got given money for birthdays and things like that. And eventually my jar filled all the way to the top. And then I was able to give it away to a good cause, like giving it to the church or giving it to a charity and so on. So that's what I did with my money. Now I know that that can be super tricky because what I really liked to spend my pocket money on was sweets because I really like sweets, especially chocolate. And so I was very tempted to do things my way and not God's way and be generous with it, uh, but to just spend it on sweeties. But let me explain how God helped me. So let's think about it. Often we are tempted to do things our way and not God's way. But what I learned when I was a kid and I'm still learning today is that God gives us his Holy Spirit to help us follow Jesus in the way that he would want us to live. So if you look at this arrow here, which I'm going to put there, hopefully now, if you look through the jar, you can see, oh, nearly knocked my water over. You can see that it's pointing to our way. Now I'm just going to open the jar up. But God gives us his Holy Spirit. So watch the arrow. And as I pour the water in, which is representing his Holy Spirit, take a look at what happens with the arrow. You can see that it begins to point to God's way. And that's what Jesus does for us. And that's how he helps us with the tricky things in life. Now we have uh, this experiment and lots of other fun things to do in the pack, which I hope you will take away and really enjoy today. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.